For any of you out there following topics around CO2 sequestration, you've probably heard some of the researchers mention that it's important to keep the CO2 in a supercritical phase. But what exactly is that and why is it important? We'll attempt to, to tackle both of those topics in this uh, short presentation. So here we have a chart that's showing the different kind of fluid types that CO2 can experience under different temperatures and pressures. Temperatures being on the x-axis, increasing to the right, uh, pressures on the y-axis increasing as you go vertically. And uh, as you can see, if we have extremely low temperatures and pressures, there's really only two different phases that CO2 can exist in, gas or solids. And uh, you know, the uh, best way to think about that is dry ice. That would be um, something that's below the triple point for, uh, for CO2. As you increase temperatures and pressures above that triple point, you'll have a third phase show up, and that's the liquid phase. Um, so you can have liquid CO2 forming when you when you get in this in this temperature and pressure range. Uh, but the other two uh, phases are possible as well, depending on where you fall on either side of these these curves. Once you get up uh, past a certain temperature and pressure, um, you will reach what's called the critical point. And the critical point is going to be where a fourth fluid phase shows up. And this is something that's referred to as a supercritical fluid. Um, supercritical fluid is interesting in that it contains uh, properties that are similar to both a liquid and a gas. Um, and that's important when it comes to injecting CO2. And we'll talk about what, how that is here uh, in the next slides. Okay, first of all, density matters. Uh, this chart, which was put together by NETL, shows uh, the, the impact of basically pressure and temperature on a given volume of CO2. So we start out here at the surface uh, you know, with, with a measurement, a, a, a volume, say, of, of 100. Um, and as we begin to you know, take it from the atmosphere, bring it down to the ground, we've compressed it already. And as we start to bring it underground, we're starting to compress it from a volume that was 100 down into something much, much smaller. And we're going to reach this critical depth, which typically is around 800 meters uh, plus, plus or minus, perhaps around um, uh, 2,600 feet uh, uh, but uh, as you get deeper than that, um, you end up with a very dense fluid, um, so, so dense that it's, it's comparable to but slightly less dense than water. So why is this important? Well, if our singular goal is to store large volumes of CO2 in the subsurface, storing it in a gaseous phase is just going to be inefficient. And start storing it in something that's a much denser phase will allow us to pack much more CO2 underground. Um, and, and storing it in the supercritical phase is, is the crucial way to do so. But there, there are other things that are special about supercritical CO2. And obviously the density, it's very high density is useful, but also it tends to have a relatively low viscosity. So this is a chart that was put out there by Espinoza and others in 2011, showing the increase in pressure that we get um, for two different scenarios, one being onshore, the other being offshore, uh, and the associated pressure <clears throat> profiles that, that we might have with that. In any event, um, we can see that CO2 density is increasing as you get down here uh, towards the, the, super, the, the critical depth where the CO2 begins to go CO, uh, supercritical. Um, you can see over here that the water in blue really doesn't change much as far as density is concerned because water is fairly incompressible and um, it really isn't going to increase in density all that much um, compared with the density increases that we'll see in the CO2. Now, on the other hand, when we look at viscosity, um, this is a plot of viscosity versus depth. And we can see that uh, on the left-hand side, that's going to be the lower viscosities. And on the higher, on the right-hand side will be the higher viscosities. So more viscous on the right, less viscous on the left. And irrespective of where we find ourselves at in the depth profile, um, or, or frankly, the associated pressure profile we think we'll get whether we're onshore or offshore, we are going to be at a, at a lower viscosity than water. Why is that important? Well, um, if, if we were trying to inject high volumes of the fluid underground and it was highly viscous, that would, that would be difficult to get that fluid to flow efficiently through the formation away from the well bore. Uh, it just wouldn't work very well. And in this case, even though viscosities do increase for CO2 as you increase depth, 
um, they don't really ever get uh, close to that of water. And you always still have much lower viscosities with CO2 than you do with water. So even though they have the density similar to a fluid, they've got the viscosity more along the lines of, of, of a gas still, even though they are in a much denser uh, phase. And that will allow for that CO2 to migrate uh, throughout the formation more readily than if it were at a, at a higher viscosity. So that is why supercritical CO2 is quite important. Thanks for your time. Bye.